Welcome back to part two of the lithium ion battery project. Hi, this is Daniel from Basement Tech. Let's continue. You might remember where we were last time. We had created a three cell functional lithium ion battery pack. And I gave you this little teaser of how it was gonna to start to take the form of a battery for the Motorola MT1000. Before we get too far, let's remind ourselves what that battery pack looks like. Here it is. But wait, what is that giant slot cut all the way around? Well, in order to save a little time on this uh, proof of concept uh, project, I chose not to have to replicate the part that actually interfaces, the mechanical part that interfaces with the radio itself. So I sliced an old battery pack up into pieces and harvested that top. You can see it here in the picture on the right. That saved a lot of time. It did make it a little uglier in the end, but I think it was the right choice. Well, I'm sorry to cause you so much stress by leaving a glaring design flaw in this project for so long, but let me put your mind at rest. The output voltage of the battery pack is going to range from, let's say, 7.5 up to 12.6, worst case, and the radio needs 9.6. So how are we going to solve that problem? Enter this little device, a miracle little device actually, called a buck boost converter. It can accept a very wide range, uh, as I'm showing here, of input voltage and can be adjusted to produce any output voltage in its range. And 9.6 is within its range, so that's where we're going to set it. So that the utility of this buck boost converter in this application is not totally lost, let me explain a little farther. The output power of the transceiver is dependent on the battery voltage. As our new lithium ion packs voltage is depleted um, and the voltage goes below 9.6, the boost function of the buck boost converter will boost it back up to 9.6. Now, so that the power equations still hold, that will deplete the battery a little quicker than it would when the buck portion or buck function of the, of the converter is being used that's going to protect the output transistors so that they don't see too much uh, voltage and potentially uh, overheat and be destroyed. So this is quite a, a useful little device in this uh, specific application. Before I got too far, I thought it might be prudent to do a little live test. So here you can see I connected our new battery pack through the buck boost converter through that little part that I harvested from the old Motorola battery pack into the radio and it all worked just as expected. So that's pretty cool. One thing I did notice though is that the major power handling component on the buck boost converter did get a little warm. So I thought a heat sink might be a good idea. So combining the need for a good strong mechanical base for the new battery pack with the heat sink I decided to make one part. Here you can see I'm modeling it up on the 3D printer just to make sure I use every tool in the arsenal and finally you can see when it's cut into aluminum on our little desktop mill that it just looks perfect. So here is the heatsink actually cut into aluminum. There's a couple of features I wanted to point out. So the two um, cylindrical objects are just standoffs that are going to hold the circuit board and the square object is actually a heatsink and um, the chamfers around the bottom, especially on the heatsink, are particularly important to spread the heat out, but the chamfers on the, um, the actual standoffs are just for um, strength. Now that we have this, we can finally have some fun. The little circuit board you see hiding behind, remember that's the buck boost converter, that's going to take the voltage of the batteries and put it into the proper range for the radio. So I'm going to go about now mounting that little circuit board onto the heatsink in a way where I won't have to worry about short circuits and things. So you notice down here the hardware is actually plastic and that's going to prevent any of the electrical contacts from contacting this, which is actually metal as well. Well, I have to admit it's very nice to deal with machine surfaces. It was no effort at all to put this together. No big surprise because I carefully, carefully measured before I drew this up on the CAD program. And of course, machine surfaces are usually almost always within a couple thousandth of thousands of what you say. As I mentioned earlier, you can see I put those little plastic washers underneath and use plastic screws on top to avoid any kind of short circuits. The um, 
the tape, if you will, in, in between that major heat generating component and the heat sink is a heat conductive tape designed for exactly this. I put a few layers, at, but I think I'm still gonna get a, a necessary uh, heat conduction to keep that, um, that circuit board um, uh, healthy and uh, have it live a good long life in this application. Okay, well, putting it all together, here we go. It all fits together really nicely into the form factor we desired. Uh, I didn't have too much issue sliding it into that, uh, call it tactical aqua sleeve that was also 3D printed and finally here mounted on the radio. Okay, well, after several days of running the radio to deplete the battery, I'm going to give it a charge. In the beginning, remember, it's a constant current um, phase of charging, and you can see here um, the constant current LED, that little low orange one in the lower left is on, and I set this to 1.3 amps. The spec sheet says 1.6, but I want to be just a little conservative and take a little more time. As this progresses, you'll see the voltage rise, and then the the constant voltage um, control of this little device will kick in and it'll be constant voltage as it fills the battery the rest of the way up. That should take, um, I think, uh, four hours or so. Uh, I'll bring you back when it switches to that constant voltage phase. After about an hour and 40 minutes, you can see that the little orange light in the lower left indicating constant current has gone out. So now we're into the constant voltage phase and this will last for I think a couple more hours. I may tweak that voltage up to exactly 12.6 but um, the charging continues. All right well this was a fun educational and useful project. One thing I didn't talk about uh, one other benefit of lithium-ion cells is that once they're charged they can sit on a shelf for months and months and still maintain a hundred percent of their full charge. So one other thing I need to address with this project is the standby current of the buck boost converter. In the current implementation, it's constantly connected to the batteries and it draws about eight milliamps, um, even when no current's being drawn from it. So that would deplete the batteries and eliminate one of the major benefits of lithium ion. So I'll address that with some kind of an external disconnect for long-term uh, shelf life. Well, if you like this kind of video, um, as always, please give it a thumbs up. I love comments and uh, questions, so please uh, put those uh, below. And if you really, really like this kind of video, please subscribe. Thanks. Bye.